Hey guys, welcome to From Our Kitchen to Yours. My name's Maverick, and today we're gonna to be making tonkatsu ramen with chashu pork belly. This can be a pretty complex recipe, but I'll walk you through it as we go along. Today we're in a modern Japanese style kitchen that I was really excited to cook in because I collaborated with our lead designer to make this space come to life. To start, we're gonna preheat our oven to 250 degrees and we're gonna get some baking soda. And we're gonna bake the baking soda at 250 degrees for one hour. So what that's going to do is it's going to change baking soda from sodium bicarbonate to sodium carbonate. And that is what's gonna give ramen noodles that traditional springy texture. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna do chashu pork belly. So this is a three pound cut of pork belly, which uh, has been curing in the refrigerator with salt uncovered for uh, overnight. Let's start rolling. So I've got some butcher's twine here. And what I'm gonna do is just get this rolled up. So I've got my Dutch oven, which uh, I'm gonna get going on this center burner. And I'm gonna use a little bit of vegetable oil. So once we've got the oil nice and shimmery and hot, we're gonna sear the pork on all sides. So now that the pork is starting to brown, um, I'm gonna throw some shallots in there and garlic real quick, and then I'm gonna deglaze the pan with some sake. So I'm gonna go grab some sake now. Now that that's happened, I'm gonna add a little of uh, a little sake. And once it's nice and browned, we're gonna add our cooking liquid. I've prepped that ahead of time, but it's uh, soy sauce, sugar, mirin, a little sake, and we're gonna add some aromatics. So some chili peppers, some garlic, and uh, a shallot. For the tare sauce, we're gonna dice some aromatics. We're gonna do uh, some shallot, we're gonna do some garlic, and uh, I'm gonna get some shiitake mushrooms, and we're gonna start in on this sauce. Okay, so for this tare sauce, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do equal parts uh, soy sauce or tamari and mirin, which is a fragrant Japanese cooking wine that's sweetened. So about half a cup to half a cup, and then half of that of sake. But you can just eyeball it. We're gonna add a little bit of sugar, say about uh, two tablespoons. I'm gonna throw the dehydrated shiitake mushrooms in there, the shallot, the scallion, and the garlic in there. While we're letting that cook, I'm gonna add a little bit of bonito flake. So this is pretty cool. Uh, this is uh, dried skipjack tuna. So this is a kind of essential ingredient when it comes to traditional Japanese cooking, and it's kind of like a key to understanding a lot of the flavor profiles. And we're gonna simmer it for a few minutes so I'm gonna strain out the solids from the tare, put that aside. So now that we've got our alkalized baking soda, uh, we're gonna start making some noodles. And to start, I'm going to mix our flours. I like to use a mixture of all-purpose flour and bread flour. I do a 50-50 mixture. And I like to weigh my uh, solid ingredients as opposed to by volume. So rather than like a cup of flour, we're gonna be doing 120 grams of flour. That being said, uh, keeping a baker scale in your kitchen is an incredibly useful tool for more accurate measuring. And so 120 grams of bread flour. Next, uh, we're gonna get to the alkalized baking powder. So this is a mild skin irritant. I suggest wearing gloves. And so slowly add the water in. You may wanna add a little bit more water than six ounces, but just kind of play it as you go. Okay, so we've rested the dough for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna take it out and knead it again. All right, so now that we've let the dough rest a second time, it's uh, springy, it rebounds when you uh, press on it. It's not too hard, but it's, pretty, it's a pretty firm dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a little bit of it and roll that out. 
And so you're gonna start by passing it through the widest setting on your pasta roller. The spaghetti noodle cutter on your uh, pasta maker is pretty good for ramen in my opinion. All right, so after 15 minutes of letting the dashi steep, I strained it, and so we've got our dashi warm on the stove right here, and we've got some pork stock warming in this pot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine those two, and we're gonna bring that up to uh, boiling, and we're gonna just monitor that, and we're gonna keep that going until we're ready to serve. So after about two to three hours, the pork belly should be easily pierced through with a knife. And once it's done, you are gonna wanna pull it out and let it cool on a wire rack and then place that in the refrigerator for between 12 and 24 hours. So this is definitely something you wanna do the day before you wanna serve the meal. Now that the chashu's been chilled, it'll be easier to slice. And I like to slice it between a quarter and a half inch thick, depending on what you like. And then laying it out on the same rack and then putting it in the broiler for just a few minutes. And there it is, tonkatsu ramen with chashu pork belly. This meal takes a lot of work. It can take a lot of time. There's a lot of shortcuts you could take along the way, but either way, it's a super satisfying meal to make. It's super satisfying to serve, and it's really fun. If you wanna make this dish at home, make sure to check out the recipe by clicking the link below. Make sure to visit Build with Ferguson for everything you need for your next project. And tune in next time on From Our Kitchen to Yours. And if you like this kind of content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our page. Thanks for watching.